Hello everyone, I'm Kalen North, and today we're going to be talking about basic strategies for the spirit River Surges in Sunlight. River is a powerful control spirit with a good amount of offense thrown in as well. Without any further ado, let's hop right into a game. Invaders start in the mountains, and we get our first choice of the game, which is our growth option. With River, I generally prefer to use growth 2 over growth 3. Uh, early in the game because scaling up by placing more presence generally helps us quite a bit, whereas gaining extra power cards is going to give us options but isn't quite as powerful. Our reclaim option obviously we want to save for when we're either out of cards or close to out of cards, but placing two presence a turn early on is going to be pretty helpful for us. In addition, I'm going to try and play as many cards a turn as I can in order to trigger River's excellent innate power massive flooding. In order to do this, I'm going to go along the bottom track with River. We're going to grow twice from the bottom track on turn 1 and twice from the bottom track on turn 2. This is going to let us play two cards on turn 1, and then on turn 2 we reclaim one of the cards we played and then play all three cards left in our hand. So we'll place a presence from the bottom track and land 7. We'll place a presence from the bottom track in land 5. We're placing a presence in land 7 with the invaders because we want to set up a Dahan counterattack using River's Bounty. I'll go into that in a little more detail once we finish talking about our plays for the turn. As for why we go into land 5, we want to set up for a sacred site in the middle of the board. Land 5 can hit everything but the corners of the board, and that way we can hit massive flooding on any land except lands 3 or 8. Now our plays for turn 1 are going to be Wash Away, which is a very powerful control card. It lets us push up to 3 towns or explorers. And then River's Bounty, which is going to give us an energy, as well as gathering 2 Dahan and spawning a 3rd Dahan, or a 4th Dahan if you have extra Dahan in the land. We need the extra energy because that way we can actually afford to play 3 cards next turn. Uh, Flash Floods costs 2 and our energy income is only 1 per turn. In addition, playing River's Bounty and Wash Away triggers our innate power massive flooding at level 1, which is going to let us stop either a build or a ravage by pushing a town or explorer. So let's finish playing cards, and now let's let the invaders go. Our powers are slow, so the invaders are going to build on a post. Then they explore in the wetlands. This inland city is going to be a big problem if we don't deal with it right away. River has a hard time dealing with cities in general, especially ones that aren't coastal. As such, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make a slightly sacrificial play. I'm going to use River's Bounty and gather two Dahan in, spawning a third one. And then I'm going to want to use Wash Away to get rid of the town and explorer and put them in a different land. The reason for this is that one city will deal three damage, which causes a blight and kills a Dahan, but when there's three Dahan in the land, two Dahan survive and fight back, killing the city. This is a sacrifice we're going to have to make. We'll lose a presence to the Blight, and we'll lose a Dahan to the Ravage as well. But it's going to take out that inland city on turn two, which is going to be huge for giving us a lot of power going into the rest of the game. Massive flooding this turn, we can't reach land three to prevent the Ravage there, so we're going to try and do something about that next turn but we can stop a build in lands 5 or 8. In this case, I'd rather stop the build in land 8 because I don't have any Dahan there and I don't have any uh, good way to deal with it later on. So I'm going to push that explorer actually into land 7 because we get to push three things with Wash Away. So I'm going to get to daisy chain that same explorer even further into land 4. We'll push all three of those invaders into land 4, setting up land 7 for the counterattack, and then we take our second turn. We are grouping these invaders in this jungle, and that could be a problem if jungles come up next, but for the most part we want to just group invaders in a land type that we're not having to worry about. If we put the town in land 5, then they'd build a city there as well, which would be very problematic. And if we put them in land 6, that would set them up for more inland explorers later on, which we want to prevent if we can. So turn 2, we already talked a little about this, I'm going to grow twice from the bottom track again, and I'm going to actually grow into that jungle, and I'm going to make it a sacred site so that I have a sacred site that can target land 3. 
We're not going to need the Sacred Site targeting land 3 right away, but it is going to be useful later on. We only have 2 energy this turn, and Flash Floods costs 2 energy. So for our reclaim, we have to take River's Bounty. We could, I mean, if we take Wash Away, that'd be fine, but we can't play it, and so we're not going to get to play 3 cards the way we wanted to. So I'll play Boon of Vigor, Flash Floods, and River's Bounty. And then that's going to trigger our innate Massive Flooding at level 2, which is a significant upgrade over level 1. Dealing 2 damage and pushing 3 Towns or Explorers. We'll finish playing cards, and this time we do have Fast Powers. I'm going to use Boon of Vigor on ourselves, because in multiplayer we'd want to use it on someone else, but in solo we don't really have another target. And then Flash Floods, I have a couple of options. I could deny the build in land 5 by Flash Flooding there, which would save, mean that next turn our wetlands are completely empty and we can focus exclusively on invaders that are in other problematic lands. I could use Flash Floods in combination with Massive Flooding to deal a total of 4 damage and take out that city in land 2, which taking out cities as river is hard. Often you have to combine Flash Floods with Massive Flooding to do it or draft a power that can take out cities. And so that could be very useful. But what I'm actually going to do is use Flash Floods in land 3 to kill the town and stop the Ravage from blighting and killing a Dahan. Flash Floods is very useful on the coast for this reason, because you can take out towns with it there with the extra damage. And in this case, we'll save the Blight, which will give us a little more flexibility later on, especially because we're already taking a Blight in land 7. So land 3 blight or doesn't blight, land 7 does blight, kills a Dahan, and we lose a presence, but the city is gone, and we're in much, much better shape now on the rest of the board. Invaders build in the wetlands, they only build in the one central wetland, and they don't build in land 8. And now the invaders explore in the jungle. So that was a little bit what we were hoping to avoid, but we'll come up with a way to deal with it. This turn, we have a couple of options for where we use our massive flooding. We could use it on land 5 to stop that Ravage, or we could use it on land 4 to prevent that built-up land from being a problem, as well as moving stuff further coastal, so that Flash Floods can deal extra damage to it, or we can group it up with the city in land 2. So I'm going to take massive flooding, and I'm actually going to target land 4. I'm going to destroy the town, which gets us a fear card. And then I'm going to push the three explorers into land two. Then I'm going to River's Bounty into land five, get those two to Han from land seven back, and hopefully find a defensive power or some other way to deal with this land in the minor power deck. If, it, if I can't find a defensive power or other way to deal with it, that's okay. Uh, if they blight there, they will cascade. We can throw the cascaded blight into land six, where it won't do much harm. Uh, we will flip the blight card if that happens, but it means that we. But that was sort of the price we have to pay in order to not get a city in land four this next turn. So I'm going to reclaim cards, gain a minor power, and I got exactly what I was looking for. So we're lucky here. Let's we'll talk through all of these quick. Um, I'll go with call to migrate is. Usually not the most useful power. Gathering 3 to Han and pushing 3 to Han can be powerful, but it's not very frequently useful. It's often, uh, often best when paired with other powers. Reaching Grasp has good elements for us with that sun and water, and giving us plus range can be really nice as well. But it's not the one we want in this situation. Call of the Dahan Ways is one of my favorite powers. I just love making more Dahan especially when I can get rid of invaders while doing it. And it does have a water element, which is really nice for us. But Quick in the Earth Struggles has defend 10 at a sacred site, which is exactly what we have a need for right now. So I'm going to take Quick in the Earth Struggles, which is a particularly good power on River just because we get sacred sites in the wetlands. And so we tend to have at least one place, one or two good places to target it. So I will play Quick in the, Quick in the Earth Struggles and wash away this turn. Unfortunately, Quick in the Earth Struggles doesn't have good elements for us, so we're not going to get our innate. And I want Wash Away to help solve land 1 before it ravages next turn. They're going to build this turn, but then I can use Wash Away to move the town and the explorer back into land 2 and set up for a large massive flooding at level 3. The reason I don't play Flash Floods instead to take out the explorer 
is because it costs an extra energy and wash away is going to have a pretty similar effect. The extra town is kind of nice because river is usually short on fear. And so we actually want to be able to destroy extra towns. The reason we don't play three cards here is because we do want to set up for playing four cards next turn so that we can get that max level massive flooding. So we're actually going to leave one card play unused this turn rather than playing something else, even though it would give us our innate at level to one. So in the fast power phase, defend with quicken the earth struggles. We get a fear card, which, oh, and <laughs> that fear card uh, would solve the land for us anyway, but we didn't know that was coming. Um, and it's probably better not to have to rely on that if you can help it. At higher difficulties, sometimes you really do need to do sort of a trust fall with fear cards. But here on this base difficulty game, that's not going to be so much the case. All right, the invaders explored in the sands. That sand in land six is going to be a bit of a problem, but we can wash away from land one and put these two into land two. They will build another town there next turn. But, as stated before, we're going to blow it up with massive flooding, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. Now, this turn, we have our Reclaim 1 already, so I can Reclaim Wash Away. But I don't have a fourth card play yet, so I need to place some Presence in order to get it. I'm going to go into land 6 and into land 2 in doing that, uncover my fourth card play, and then you can go either way at this point. I like to go for the second energy in case the game is going to go longer and I need to start going towards major powers. But five card plays is also extremely powerful as River, being able to play four cards from our starting hand to trigger our innate power at level three, as well as one utility power every single turn. So I'm going to place the presence from the top track, but again, either one is viable. And now I'm going to play all four of my starting hand and we get massive flooding at level three. Not every spirit has this where they can get their max level innate by playing their starting hand, but River is fortunate in that they can. And so we get access to massive flooding and can do oodles and noodles of damage. All right, I'm gonna finish playing cards. I'm gonna use Boon of Vigor on myself. That city in land two is not going to die to massive flooding unless we use flash floods on it. Um, and so we need to decide whether we want to do that or try and take it out with a Dahan counterattack next turn. I personally would rather uh, take it out with Flash Floods, so we're going to go ahead and do that, deal one damage to the city, and pick off a Lone Explorer, leaving the city with two health. And then we get to use Massive Flooding on land two. However, before I Massive Flood on land two, I'm going to use Wash Away to push this Explorer into land two. That way we get an extra target and we solve an extra land. As for dealing with land six, I don't have a great way to deal with it fast because it is inland. And so I'm gonna use a, river, a Dahan Sacrifice again. Gather in two Dahan with River's Bounty, spawn a third. Now when the invaders ravage there, they'll deal three damage. Blight, destroy a presence, and kill one Dahan, but the other two Dahan will fight back and take out all of the invaders. Finally, um, I'm going to just skip past the draft here, because what we draft doesn't make... Well, <laughs> we can use Drift Down into Slumber to protect that Ravage, so we'll just take that anyway. Um, finally, we're going to need to deal with this Explorer in Land 7, and so I'm going to use Flash Floods to do that. Uh, we drew Drift Down into Slumber, which lets us defend four in a sand. We don't actually need the defense in land six, but since we got it, I'm going to play it. Um, we defend there, we flash floods there, and now the only invaders left are here in this sand. And we even take out one of them with the fear card. And when they ravage, the last town dies and we win the game at terror level one. So that's River Surges in Sunlight. It's a very powerful spirit. It often wins at Terror level 1 or 2 because it's not great at generating fear. Um, but it is pretty good at taking out invaders en masse, um, especially if you're able to avoid those inland cities and just cities in general. 
um, and group the invaders up for that, hitting them with that massive flooding. Well, thank you for watching. Um, I encourage you to experiment with River. This strategy is a good one, I think, but there are other ways to play the spirit as well. And if you have any feedback on other ways to play the spirit or something you liked or didn't like in the video, please just let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching.